Hello, everyone. Terry Spencer here. Uh, today, I want to give you a key uh, for governing and legislating in the courtrooms of heaven. I call it God's divine blueprint for a greater victory. Uh, I also call it a flow chart. So it'll literally change everything, uh, especially in the courtrooms of heaven. You'll get greater results and you'll have uh, more of an impact in everything you do and the mandates God has given you to. But first, before I go on, I want to invite you to subscribe to uh, the YouTube channel, click and like, and got a share button on there once you get in the video. And and uh, I also have a link for uh, the Patreon site that you'll uh, be able to join our weekly uh, interactives that we have every Sunday evening at 6 p.m. Central Time. But let's get started. Let's just jump right in. Uh, so there are a lot of foundational scriptures, uh, uh, but I feel a couple of them, especially Isaiah 9, is a scripture that gives us God's governmental flow chart and how to govern uh, effectively in the courts of heaven. It's going to change everything because this should be the flow chart for everything we do pertaining to life and godliness. But it's really powerfully effective in when we engage the courts of heaven. So Isaiah 9 uh, is the example of that. We'll cover the whole chapter here very shortly. It'll be a short video. Uh, but uh, we're talking about the ecclesia. And where there are governments, there are also courtrooms of heaven. So this is a governmental uh, a blueprint, a governmental flow chart of how to conduct our activities when we govern or legislate in the courtrooms of heaven and outside of the courtrooms of heaven to re restore creation from the bondage of corruption, so forth and so on. So Isaiah 9, 6, and 7 is powerful scripture. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Now, that implies there has to be a relationship. We come into the kingdom as a child, but there has to be a relationship to a sonship level where God will entrust us to govern on his behalf. He says he's given of the works of his hands. In Psalm 8, he says, I've given the works of my hands unto you. Uh, so that means each and every one of us have a spiritual mandate that we have been given to be uh, rule and reign over. So uh, again, we enter into the kingdom of, uh, of God as a child, but we're expected to grow up and mature so that we will be entrusted to govern righteously. Now, there is some a lot of scriptures. I'm not going to go into those, but there's a lot of New Testament scriptures that talk about uh, growing up and moving beyond the elementary teachings uh, of Christ. Uh, not doing away with them, but moving beyond and above so we can come into governmental status as he is so are we in this world is one of my favorite scriptures. So, uh, 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 and the government, next line says in the scripture says, and the government will be upon his shoulder. Now, if it's upon his shoulder and we are the body of Christ, where does the government rest? It rests on my shoulder, right? And so that's where we, we come into the position as a co-creator, co-legislator with God to begin to move in areas we've, we've previously not been allowed to or known about. So we're moving in there more, more effectively as we're maturing uh, with Christ. Uh, again, where there are governments, there are also court systems. This happens in the world. It happens in the heavenlies. Uh, the governments of the of the earth are a mirror image of the governments of the kingdom of heaven uh, without the corruption. And so uh, uh, now moving on to in Isaiah 9, verse 6 and 7, he says, And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Now that sh shares, he's sharing some uh, powerful uh characteristics of a righteous judge now verse 7 says something very interesting to pay attention to this he says of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end so my question is why is the government and peace connected and not the warfare mentality in warfare mode well here's the deal every time the word says the God of peace will soon crush Satan under our feet. 
It does not say that the God of warfare will soon crush Satan under our feet. It says the God of peace. So back up to verse 7, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. So when you're operating effectively according to God's divine blueprint, uh, to legislate and govern, the end result is always peace. If you don't have peace in your life, if you're not seeing peace as a result of everything you do, we're missing something. So out of an intimate relationship with the Lord, we can go back to him and inquire of the Lord. I actually have a video on inquiring of the Lord that's been uh, moving in uh, some uh, 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 likes and uh, you know greater interest in that uh, since we mentioned it a few times, but it's on my YouTube channel. And I'll give you a link to that in the in the comments below. Why, 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 why? We wonder why we we've been so trained to be in a warfare mode. But if we enter into his rest and his peace, we'll begin to move more effectively. We'll be uh, not not so uh, worried about what's happening on this earthly plane in this warfare mentality that we've been taught and taught and taught that we had to do. We'll be uh, alone with seated in Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father. He will reveal everything to us according to his perfect will and, and plan and destiny for us or uh, cities, states, and nations. So here's an interesting, uh, why I love this chapter. It says, upon the throne of David and over his kingdom. Well, let's just stop there a minute. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom. Now, that tells me that we're seated. This is an earthly seat. David was seated on his throne in the earth, but we have a much higher seat than David did because we're seated in Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father. So in that place, we're above the, the, the battlefield. We're ruling, reigning, not worried so much about what's going on down below, but anything Yahweh wants to, us to deal with as a co-creator, co-legislator, he will begin to speak to you about that. So it's not going to be your will and your way you think it should work out. And, and uh, you know, in fact, if we're in a, a self-agenda, self-will type, type mentality, maybe we're in the courts of self-will governing on uh, uh, or based very closely on witchcraft. So we don't want to be there. So we want to have an intimate relationship with Yahweh, the righteous judge, so that we can know his perfect will for whatever situation we're dealing with. Amen. So uh, again, we have an earthly seat uh, uh, as David, but our seat is higher in Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father as a co-creator. It all, always works with him in righteousness. The scriptures say a creator in righteousness, a judge in righteousness. So when we are judging, we're not uh, looking for revenge. We're looking for the righteous redemption of the Lord in every situation, not on a battlefield anymore. Get off the battlefield, get all, uh, get over that mentality because we're ruling and reigning. It's all about restoration. And so we're moving on into, uh, to, uh, the rest of that scripture. There's the purpose of, of, uh, that is to order and establish his kingdom on earth with judgment and justice. Both those words have to do with not the end of the world or gloom and doom, but the restoration of all things from this time forward and forevermore. Do you think that means today? Yes. Here's our purpose. With that flow chart, that governmental blueprint that he gives us in Isaiah 9, it's powerful because this is, this is what happens. We co-judge with him we operate as a co-justice with him a co-legislator with legislative being with him so to order and establish the kingdom of god on earth through restoration from this time forever and even forever forward for excuse me this time forward and even forever so that includes today now what i really like is uh uh, that we will judge the earth and the angels, his judgments and justices are always about restoration. I said that before, but I want to make sure that we're not moving towards revenge. This person did something nasty to me. I want, I want retribution. I want revenge. I want to cut his ear off, you know, kind of thing. Uh, but God says, I operate in love. My heart is, is always, always restoration. 
So uh, very important to keep in mind. Now, the last statement in Isaiah 9, 6, and 7 is really interesting. We just read over it, but we don't pay attention to what it says most of the time. It says, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this, will perform this. The zeal of the Lord will, of hosts will perform it. What does that mean? That means God is really excited about when we step into the governmental ecclesia legislations and justice system of heaven. He gets really excited so much to the point where he releases a host of uh, angelic beings to assist us to perform whatever task uh, he's mandated for us to do governmentally, not in not just in the courts, but also in every sphere uh, or mandated sphere that we're involved in. So that is really, really awesome. But now, now just a couple of months ago, I read uh, over Isaiah 9, 1 and 5, and I generally skip over that, but I've got my Bible open here. I want to I read, I forget what version this is, but it says here in verse 1, uh, for there will be no gloom for her. This, this, this is, let me back up just a moment. This is the results of proper, uh, uh, properly uh, divine, operating in divine order from God's word when you begin to govern and operate in the courts of heaven. Uh, verse 1, Isaiah 9 says, but there will be no gloom, no gloom for her who was in anguish. Wow, isn't that good? How many of you are in anguish out there? Uh, there's no gloom for you if you do this correctly. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Natali. But in the latter time, he has made glorious the way of the sea. Everything around you will turn. Everything will begin to change. The sea will transform. You'll begin to see the light. We'll go on and share that in just a minute. Uh, so verse two says, uh, here's the keys, what happens with effective uh, courtrooms of heaven, uh, legislations following his blueprint. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Well, that people might be, just be you. It might be me. But if you're on a larger scale, mandated scale of authority, the people in a city, a state or a nation uh, or the earth will have seen a great light. All of a sudden, the glory light of God will come and shine upon whatever he's called you to do. And those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. Awesome, isn't it? Amazing. Uh, verse 3, you have multiplied the nation. God will multiply you financially. He'll multiply you in healing. He'll multiply in all his provision. And providence, he will just unload uh, uh, along with angelic assistance. I believe we're in that time and season now that we're understanding courtrooms of heaven, the ecclesia, and in governing uh, creation as a co creator. We're going to begin to be a partner in all this. Uh, verse three also says, goes on to say, You have multiplied the nation and you have increased its joy. You'll have an increase in joy. You won't be worried like you were before. Uh, they will rejoice before you. They will rejoice before you. Praise and worship. As with the joy of the harvest. <laughs> Isn't that something? As with the joy of the har harvest. And they are glad when they divide the spoil. When they divide the spoil, I had a revelation not long ago, how we're, we're limited in our our governmental declarations, well, he owes me sevenfold. It's much more than that. He may also be required to give up the substance of his house, which includes all the booty and this plunder and the spoils of war throughout your entire generational bloodline, all the way back to Adam. That is amazing. Let's go for more uh, because there's more available for us. Okay, verse four, for the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, has been broken as on the day of, of Midian. The staff, the chains, the bondages, the limitations, the restrictions have all been broken off of you, off of whatever you're mandated to govern and legislate over. Isn't this awesome? Uh, verse 5 says, For every boot of the trampling warrior, warrior, excuse me, every boot of the trampling warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood 
will be burned as fuel for the fire. All the evidence of anything against you will be burned uh, as fuel for the fire. Wow, isn't that amazing? Well, that's all I have for you today. I'm going to do a lot of these little videos for uh, for uh, you guys coming up in the in the near future. Uh, short, short, short videos, and we're going to do long content too. But uh, do uh, uh, YouTube Shorts as well. So be sure to subscribe to my channel. Click a like on this and uh, and subscribe to my channel. Also, there's a link. I'll put a link for the Patreon group. If you want to be a part of that every week, Sunday night at 6 p.m. Central Time. All right. Well, God bless you and see you next time.